Hi everyone, I'm Martin and welcome to another great edition for Astronomy for Beginners. Now I've had a lot of questions from a lot of Astronomy for Beginners members and they requested me to do a video based on how to dry out your optics of your telescope. Now we know winter is here and winter has been quite bad, the weather has been atrocious and there's a lot of people who are very concerned about their telescopes when they bring it inside and they looked at the, the telescope themselves or they've been imaging or they've been looking for the telescope uh, using it visually uh, they were very shocked by themselves that they actually see uh, the telescope turn to ice the optic optical glass and the mirrors just either dew up or just frosted over completely now when that happens it's the end of your uh, session of your imaging or visual stuff okay so when they when your optics just freezes up then you might as well pack your kit and pack the telescope away and go 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 again the next night however a lot of people are concerned when they're really iced up and i had a lot of questions saying well does that actually damage my telescope does it actually damage my telescope when I've got moisture or I've got ice on my optics? Well, there's a few reasons and if you take these certain precautions, you can, uh, it is really quite simple to uh, rectify. The main problem is though, is if you don't do uh, necessary certain things you've got to do to dry out your optics, you will damage your telescope. Yes, you will. Now, a lot of it is trapped moisture, and the moisture, if it gets trapped in between the optics, optical train, between the end lens elements, particularly refractors, or Maxitoff Cassegrains, or any compound telescopes, even Newtonian reflectors, right? If you trap that air, or that moisture, um, you're gonna get a lot of problems with trapped water, and when that water does dry out, it will create fungus. Or, or moss in between particular on refractors or compound telescopes because they're a closed tube variety you will get uh, this mo this moisture turn into this fungus now that is a really bad indication if you get moisture and you get that fungus between your optics it is expensive at cleaning and it usually requires a lot of expert uh, or strip downs for a technician to try and clean that for you now this is something that most amateur astronomers can't undertake and usually when you clean out these optics they re probably require recoating the optics themselves so again it's a very expensive and it, it is very damaging to the optics and you don't want to get this fungus particularly with the closed tube variety of telescopes. Now I'm not here to scare you guys and girls, but I will give you a few hints and tips along the way which you can do and you will prevent this from ever happening. And it's actually so simple to do. Okay, so here in this video guide, I'm here to show you my hints and tips on how I would drive the optics. Now I appreciate all the uh, experienced uh, amateur astronomers and monsters will probably have a different way of doing it but this is just a, a guide what I always do and I've never had any of this problem with this fungus all right so it's always worked for me so if you follow this video guide step by step you can't go wrong so at the moment I've just finished I'm imaging Venus at the moment tonight and the clouds have come in so what I've done I've purposely uh, left my Maxitov 127 Mac, all right, which is a a dew magnet of a telescope, and you will see this when I bring it inside. Now, again, it's really cold outside. It's minus two. I'm just hoping it's iced over. I've left it for about two and a half hours, and we're going to bring it inside. There is the key point. Whatever you do, if your imaging or your eyepieces or your, if your eyepieces or your camera freezes up or something like that or your lenses start freezing up first thing you should never do to any optical uh, telescopes okay if you start seeing dewing on your lens system all right, or even on your eyepieces 
please, whatever you do, do not wipe the lenses, okay, or the mirrors. Do not wipe them at all with a, cl a clean cloth or nothing like that. That is the first point of call. If they do mist over, don't touch them, all right? Not even a, a, a lens brush or a, or a cloth. Please, whatever you do, do not touch the lenses or the optical or the optics of the telescope. Because what you'll do is, is you're going to smudge the, the, the lens or the mirror. You may scratch coatings, okay? And you don't want to do that. You're going to do more damage than good. So what you're going to do is the first priority, if it does ice up and the optics does ice up, okay, uh, is as soon as you bring it inside, uh, the optics will then turn into water, this moisture, and it may get trapped in between the lens elements, particularly refractors or compound telescopes. So the first thing you never do is cover up the lens cap or wipe the optics. The first priority you should do, and I'm going to do it just now, is bring the telescope inside in a warm room, particularly like this one. This is very warm. This is around about 19 degrees. Okay, so bring it in first thing. So, I brought in my Maxistoff 127 Mac, and as you can see, even with the dew shield. Now, the dew shield, the purpose of the dew shield is to prevent dew from settling on the lens. However, it only does it to a certain amount. Now, I've been at, I've had this telescope for two and a half hours, and you can see in the lens system, it's dewed up, right? The dew shield prevents it, uh, let, lets it last longer at, in the field, but you will settle in inside uh, the dew shield. So again, first thing I would do, okay, is remove the dew shield. Now a lot of astronomers assume that the dew shield will protect it from the, uh, the moisture. It's not strictly true. And as you can see, as we open up, you can see now, there is that moisture. All right, that is the dew. All right, so even with a dew shield, okay, don't automatically cover it up saying, oh, that's fine. No, it's not fine, because that's where the water droplets are there. Okay, so what I would do is when I pack the telescope, keep the telescope in a horizontal position, all right? You don't want to have it in the upright position or whatever. Downward is probably better, but most of the time, keep it in a horizontal position. Now, again, most astronomers will get panicked or beginners get panicked and they see all this dew and they think, oh my god, what am I going to do? I need to cover up the lens cap. Whatever you do, never ever put a lens cap. Because what you're going to do is you're going to trap that and then what that will cause, it will cause water droplets to seep in into the optics and then that's when that fungus will start to form up inside your telescope and then it will start creating damage. So, for most of us, the best policy is remove all your items, your accessories, even your red dot finders or your, your aiming devices will also do up. Okay, so take that to one side. Even your eyepieces and your diagonal mirror will start to form up moisture. And you can see here, I've got moisture there. So again, same policy, never wipe your eyepieces, let them dry out. Okay, so remove all your accessories. Don't cover them up, don't put the lens caps on, just leave them as they are. Now the best policy for most of us is let the optics dry out in a warm room. And in other words, just leave it. That's the easiest way to do it. Just leave the optics, even if the tube is turned to ice, all right, just leave it alone. Let it just dry out normally. And in this warm room itself, leave it for about an hour, probably all night. It's always best to just leave it to the next morning. Okay, so that is the best advice I can give you if you are, um, they've got pot concerns about you and you don't want water droplets. However, if you're one of these uh, guys who want to uh, speed up the process, the drying process, there is ways to do it. And it, it is very easy to do as well. Now again, you've got to be very careful 
with all optics again you can see it's starting to dry out but it's taking a while and it's easy all you got to do is invest in one of these okay now husbands of monsters nick your wife's hairdryer that's all you're going to need and what you're going to do is using the cold setting okay or using a warm setting you do not need the the air dryer too hot okay you don't want to do that so you want to have it on a low setting and what we do is we're going to brush the, we're going to brush along the optics okay and in nice sweeps okay you don't want to put too much hot air actually on the glass particularly if the optics are very uh, frosted over okay you don't want to do that all right and you can see the whole tube is all full of dew and all that so what we're going to do low setting on the heat okay and then you're going to dry out nice gentle sweeps okay like so and what you're doing is here nice gentle smoke sweeps all right so you're going to do, keep drying it nice and easy you can do circular motions just make sure you do not touch the glass with the hairdryer. Just keep it between a safe distance, about four, six inches across. Okay, and just keep nice, nice and easily. Right, just nice warm setting, no hot setting, not too hot. Okay, as you can see now, it's starting to dry out. As you can see now, look at that. Look at that already dried out okay it may take a while all right so that means you can now uh, safely place the dust cap okay like so but it's not quite dry yet so I won't place the uh, dust cap so again if just keep doing it till it's dry nice simple strokes like that and you can also just dry out the tube as well okay just go along and just dry out the tube okay that's nice and dry it's all drying out, drying out now look at that there's no water all right simple look at that Now you, you can even do this on your accessories, okay? Like your red dot finder, nice simple strokes like that. Simple, look at that, nice and dry. And even on your eyepieces, okay? See the eyepiece there? The eyepiece is uh, mystified, right? We'll put the dryer. nice simple strokes as you can see now yeah that's all the dew now and again warm all the way around your, your diagonal see even the mirror itself inside is dewed up so again Just do circular motions, alright? Because the mirror, the moisture gets in there. So we just keep drying it. It's almost gone. Have a quick look. Now keep going it. And then voila, look at that. That's all nice and dry. Never use hot setting, alright? Don't use a, just a low blow medium setting or whatever and it will dry out and so now as you can see now I can now cut my pieces and my accessories okay even the mirror okay cut them up okay so that's all my optics capped up and the good thing is uh, this is nice and dry okay and then I can place the cap onto the telescope safely 
Now again, if you follow that, you're not going to get any fungus, I guarantee you now. All right, and I've been doing it for years and years, and I've never had any problems with my optics of my telescopes. And I've got about seven of, seven of them. All right, so I've got a lot of upkeep, but see how easy that is. And again, I have not touched the mirror or the lenses. I've, you know, I've just basically just used an air dryer to speed up the process. Again, you could just leave it out if you don't have an air dryer. But you can see how quickly I've achieved that in a matter of minutes. Just, just quick drying out. Now again, if it's icy, if you've got ice on your tube, it's going to take longer. But there's also one thing I would like to show you. And again, I briefly covered the desiccant cap. Uh, this is particularly useful uh, when you've got optics of a closed tube variety where you've got a refractor or Max Toff or Schmidt category. Even though you've, eliminated, you've warmed the tube and you've got rid of all the moisture on the lens and the tube itself, there may be some moisture that might have got trapped inside the, the optical glass. Okay? Or see through the mirror or whatever is inside there. Now, again, it can be a bit difficult uh, and, and I wouldn't recommend uh, blowing an air dryer in between the eyepiece holder. All right, there may be a risk of your blowing might be uh, might be blowing debris inside the tube. However, there is a much easier and simpler idea. Was this? This is a desiccant cap. Now, again, this is covered in my last video guide. If I if you click on the link up there, it will show you how to make this yourself. Okay, and it costs pounds to make. And all it is is just a few desiccant uh, beads like this, okay? And these desiccant beads will absorb all the moisture that whatever is inside that tube. And it is quite simple. In the video guide, you click above there, you can click on there, and you can make yourself a little cap for a few pounds, okay? I've seen these in some Astro shops or some websites overcharging these at stupid prices. And I mean, I'm not going to pay 30, 40 pound for a desiccant cap when you can make one yourself quite easily. All right, and it does the same job. So again, if you want, if you're interested in making this device, just click on that link. All right, and it'll take you there uh, to, to view uh, that that video. And again, it's so easy. I'm not going to go closer to detail. It's that easy to do. Okay, I put my inch and a quarter on my telescope, and I just slot it in. Okay. Alright, there's desiccant bees in there, okay, and because this acts like a dust cap, alright, I just leave it in, and what that does is, it, from time to time, it's going to draw out all that moisture out from the tube, and prevent all that fungus from forming in your telescope, okay, and that's it, just leave it, that is so simple, just follow these basic tips, and you can't go wrong, alright, and this is the same thing I do for every type of telescope, okay, Alright, and there's no, it's not really hard to do to be honest here. Alright, so, I hope this video guys helped you. And please subscribe to my channel, okay, it's going to be loads more videos out there. Alright, and again, we're also available on the Facebook group, it's shown me for beginners. Alright, we're also available there. And again, keep posting those images. Thanks again, thanks for watching, and clear skies to you all.